lab. How do you find your local film lab? Get your local directory and look for one. But you know what? There are only about 20 film labs in North America that print and develop 35 millimeter, of which about eight of them are in LA, two in San Francisco, four in New York, two in Toronto, two in Vancouver, one in Seattle, one in Denver, two maybe three in Chicago, one in Atlanta, one in Pittsburgh, one in Miami, I think one in Texas. There aren't that many. And one in New Jersey. There aren't that many 35 millimeter labs in the world. So you'll find your directory, find the labs. Here in Los Angeles, uh, the, the, least, the best of the inexpensive, no budget ones, the non-union ones. The most expensive of the inexpensive ones would be Photochem in Burbank. Photochem and Burbank, down to the two least expensive, we're sitting in one now, Film Services Lab here, and a competitor around the block, RGB Lab. Now let's go into what the cost. I'm not recommending any, and these are all film labs. You know what? They're all the same. They have the same piece of equipment down in the basement. Okay, this is an old building, it looks tacky, but you know what? The equipment's the same as in Photochem, or Movie Lab, or CFI, or Technicolor, or Deluxe the mechanical equipment and the soup and the printing stock and developing stock. So now let's look at what is this stuff going to cost. You have 50,000 feet of 35 millimeter stock. Or maybe you have 60,000 feet or 100,000 feet. Every day you expose two to 5,000 feet of this film stock to light and actors. Now you have exposed film stock. Every night you drop this film stock off at your whatever lab is going to develop and print. So you drop the exposed film stock at the lab. The lab now develops the negative. That's a charge. So when you get the rate card from your local lab, you look for the 35 millimeter developing cost, negative developing. A technical phrase you might see is the number or the name one light. You look for what a one light cost. It is the least colored developing process for a negative. A one light is the technical phrase. When you get your final print, answer print on stage 38, the, then we go to the three light. But now we're just thinking about a one light to get our basic colored print. So you want to develop the negative. You look at the rate card for developing cost or negative developing cost, or maybe you'll see the phrase one light. You look for that. On page 52, you'll see it up there developing. There it says negative 52.7. It doesn't matter what the, the, the stock number is, Kodak, Fuji, or if it's the same. And then on the column on the right, you look at price per foot. Now you see it's 11 and a quarter cents a foot. So you got 50,000 feet. If this is the price, 11 and a quarter cents per foot, it's about $5,500 to get it developed. Now it's developed. Now the negative's developed, but you need a print to look at. The print to look at. So now the print, you go and look at what is the print cost, and here it's picture only. There's the one light. And here it's 16 cents. So now from the developed negative, they strike an inexpensive colored print that's called a one light. You know it as your dailies, or your screenings, or your rushes. And that same piece of film stock, when you negotiate with the lab, they call it the one light, technical jargon. When you look at it in the lab, you'll call it your dailies, or screenings, or rushes. That's non-technical. And then when you finish looking at it, and you put it under your arm and drop it off at wherever you're going to edit, they'll call it a work print. So it's the same piece of celluloid that we change the names of different phrases or phases in order to confuse beginners and think you got a higher prose like us. That's the same thing. There's nothing. A one light, the developing, the rushes, the dailies, the screenings, and the work print, same piece of celluloid. So now if this, whatever lab you're going to work at, you look at the rate card and you'll see the price of developing and printing, add the two together. Because to look at something and have a work print that you can edit, you got to pay those two costs. So you add the two together, and here it's about 27, 28 cents. So if we had 50,000 feet, we'd have to pay 28 cents a foot. Wrong. That's what it says in their rate card. Remember what I told you again? Never pay retail in this industry. Discount it. Knock off 30%. You'll get the deal. 
So if this is 28 cents a foot, the rate card says, I'd not go off six cents. I'd call the lab up and say, hey, I need, uh, I only got enough money for 22 cents for develop and print. You want my money? It's 12,000 bucks, whatever. They'll ask you how many feet, 16 to 35. As soon as they hear 35, cash register rings <laughs> from the lab. The lab knows that they are going to get, if you're going to shoot at a low 50,000 feet of film stock, they're going to get about 25 to $35,000 from you. So if they don't, they'll go for 35, but if all they get is 25, they'll take it, and here's your time to negotiate it. Knock the price down. It's not a hard negotiation. This takes 10 seconds, and it's not a negotiation. You've got the gold. You have the money. Lab, here it is. I've got 25 to 35 thou. I'm not going to give you 35 thou. I'll give you 25 thou, though. I can get this deal at this other lab, but my cinematographer, for whatever reason, would like to print and develop and work with you. So if you want my 25 thou, say so now. That's the end of the negotiation. But I'll explain by the end of today the other two steps, step 28 during the editing period and 29 when we get the answer printed, the other two things that you negotiate in that 30 second period. But right now, to get it in the can, let's say it's going to be about 30 cents a foot is the rate card, but you'll subtract 20 or 20 or 20 or 30 percent. So it's 30 cents a foot, subtracting 20 percent, or 6 cents, it's 24 cents a foot. 50,000 feet is about $12,000. That's what it costs to print and develop your negative and get your work print. That's the lab deal starting off now. Let's go to the camera package. On page 71. Camera package. To get our cameras, you're going to get the camera rental facility, you get your local film directory, and you're going to find out camera rental facilities rep either one of two camera manufacturers. There is either Panavision or Araflex. That's the manufacturer of the cameras. You're either going to get a Panavision package or an Araflex 35 millimeter package. Now Panavision with their cameras, they have different makes, 35 millimeter. The top of the line, uh, I'm not sure, it's called their Platinum, then their Gold, then their Panastar, then their Panaflex. And they have one or two other little makes in there, 35 millimeter. They all work, they all work fine. Araflex, the order of Araflex 35 millimeter cameras, their most expensive is called their 535, 535. Then it's the BL4, then the BL3, then the BL2, and the least expensive is the 2C. So you get the camera rate card from these camera rental facilities, and you look at the rate for the camera. When you get the rate cards, it's going to be a big piece of paper, maybe five sheets, and you'll see the camera and a list, the five or six 35 millimeter cameras and the 16 millimeter cameras. And on the right hand side, it'll list the day rate and sometimes it'll have a column listing the week rate. You'll see for these cameras, they'll rent them from anywhere from 150 to $500 per day. The day rate, the day rate. What you've got to understand when you rent a camera, if you just get the camera, it's useless. You've got to get about 20 or 30 other gizmos to work with it. That's why we call it a camera package. You have to get lenses, tripods, sticks, handheld gear, magazines, batteries. So you get the 20 or 30 other things. So when you get the camera rental rate card, you'll see three to five pages of gizmos. And you put together your cinematographer DP says, this is the basic package I need. So then you see what you can afford, and you itemize the 20 or 30 things, and you'll come up with a day rate of anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 per day. $1,500 to $2,000 per day. That's what it costs to rent a camera package, $1,500 to $2,000 per day. Are you going to pay that? No. Does anybody pay that? No. But that's what it says in print. Don't pay it. Here are the tricks in renting cameras. First off, there's what's called the student rate or the weekend rate. The student rate or the weekend rate, and that nickname sometimes the credit card rate, is you're going to pick the camera up for the weekend. Pick it up on Friday, return it on Monday, use it for three days, you pay for one day. So you know what? I've now given you enough information in this class to make your feature film. 
You can now be Robert Towns in Hollywood Shuffle. Credit card. Take your, get your script, take your credit card, go over to Kodak Fuji Studio Film and Tape, and say, give me $2,000 worth of film stock. They'll give you 10, 10 cans. You go over to the camera rental house and you give me your credit card and say, give me a camera, BL3 or a gold with all the lenses for the weekend. They'll give it to you, they'll put on an insurance price. You got film stock, you got camera, you can tell everybody, come over to my house, you're the actors, let's shoot it. And that's it. That's what it takes, guys. And you get whatever you can in the can in the two or three days. You drop it off at any lab, you don't have to pay the lab yet. Every lab will be glad to take your film stock and they'll say, we'll print and develop, no problem. Because they know once they do that first printing and developing, you're going to keep coming back. So that's how you start. Credit card. And you got to wait to pay off the credit card, and a month later, you pay it off, you do it again for another weekend. Credit card filmmaking is weekend filmmaking. It's a possibility. That's how John Waters started. That's how John Sayles started. That's how Robert Townsend started. Maybe you should start there. It's realistic. That's credit card weekend filmmaking. You have enough information to do that. But let's go. We're going for a two-week or a three-week shoot. We're going to rent for three weeks. You understand the weekend rate, the discount rate. So now, let's go for, let's get a deal for three weeks. You'll see an interesting thing. If it has the rate card from the camera rental facility, has two columns, the day rate and the week rate. Or maybe in small print down here, they'll say something like, we honor a four-day week. We honor a four-day week. What a four-day week is, if it costs $500 to rent the camera for one day, they will give it to you for seven days for only four-day rate, a four-day week. If it's $500 for one day, they'll give it to you for $2,000 for the week. So if it's $1,500 to $2,000 for the entire camera package for one day, and they honor a four-day week, they'll give you a $6,000 to $8,000 rate per week. Good deal? No! That's a sucker's deal. It's in print. It's retail. Nobody pays a four-day week. You're going to be told it's a good deal and you think it's a good deal. It's the sucker's deal. Nobody pays more than a three-day week, even though in print says a four-day week. And I've never paid more ever than a two-day week. I've done it about 20, 24 times. I've never paid more than a two-day week. There are too many camera rental facilities around. I always get a two-day week. It has not ever been a problem. Never a problem. So if it's $1,500 to $2,000 per day, and I want to rent for three weeks, I multiply, I tell them it's a two-day week. This is all the money I have, yes or no. If not, I'm getting from the other camera f facility down the block, and they have the same equipment. So then the price then, if it's a two-day week, it's $3,000 to $4,000 per week times three weeks that I'm going to have the equipment. So now, the camera rental equipment, step number seven up here, camera, is nine to twelve thousand dollars. For a totally professional 35 millimeter camera package, nine to twelve thousand dollars, be it Panavision, be it Araflex. Next, Expendables. Page 72 in your workbook has one of the largest catalogs of expendable stores in Hollywood. Next, number eight, Expendables. Expendables. And in foreign countries or international countries, they're called consumables. Expendables or consumables during your shoot are one-time only items you're going to purchase for one time, use for one time, and you can't use them again. Batteries, filters, gels, grip tape, gaffing tape, air blower, certain type of pencils, squeegees, dubatine, blackout. You don't need to know what they are. You're just going to have to write a check to the grip or the gaff or the key grip or the key grapher or the cinematographer. They'll pick up the stuff. All you need to know, it's going to cost you one to $2,000 to get expendables or consumables. Next, let's get sound equipment. Number nine, sound equipment. You're going to go get sound equipment. You're going to, to get sound equipment, what you're going to look for is a guy or gal in the local area that has all their own sound equipment. Everywhere that you are and live, there are many of these people. 
you will very rarely ever find a cameraman that has his own very good 35 millimeter camera. 16, yes, not 35. So you rent cameras from the camera rental facility, but sound, sound is gonna come from, you don't have to go to the sound facility, you'll find sound people that have their own equipment. There are probably in LA, Southern California, 300 people that have all their own equipment. Northern California, they're probably 50 to 70. Chicago, probably 100. Seattle, probably 15 to 20. Wherever you're shooting, you'll find them. But it's your job when you find these people to make sure when they say they have their own equipment, they have more than adequate equipment. Here's what you check up on. When you look for them and their equipment, here's what you look for to see that they have the three types of things they should have. A, they need a recording machine. More than likely, the recording machine is gonna be called the name of the manufacturer that makes most of them, Anagra, N-A-G-R-A. There are about three or four different types of Nagras. And now we're getting into, that's the tape Nagras, the di digital audio that's coming in. If you can find that, that's a little bit better, but it's not a big difference. So you look for the sound man that has their Nagra, A, their sound recording machine. But now it comes down to the microphones. What microphones do you have? Because that's where the first sound comes in. If the mic stinks, I don't care what type of equipment and tape they have, the sound's gonna stink. So now you look for what microphones do you have? How many microphones? Omnidirectional boom microphone? How many lavalier microphones? What about wireless microphones? And with the wireless, do you have the radio transmitters? And the other microphones, do you have the cables to run with it? So the sound man or woman, when they say they have their own equipment, look for, do you have the Nagra? Do you have the microphones? Do you have radio? And do you have the cables? B. So that's the second part. The third is the little mixing box. That they can actually do a little mix during the sound shoot of anywhere from four to 16 tracks, even though you probably never go more than four tracks. So when you go find your sound man, you look for a person that has their own equipment to include the Nagra, all the cables and microphones, and the mixing box. You will find this person for, no problem, $1,500 to $2,000 per week. No problem, $1,500 to $2,000 per week. Plus, you get that person, all the equipment, and out of the $1,500 to $2,000 per week, they pay for their assistant, who is the boom man, the mic man, the cable man. It's always a two-person package that you get. So your sound equipment's gonna be four to $6,000. That's it. This is the same, that they're all pros. That's the pros and stuff. Next, when you get sound, you gotta understand you're gonna to have to write another check for, it's called step number 10, sound transfers. Transfers. Film stock, you gotta understand when you're shooting your picture, you buy film stock for Kodak, Fuji, Agfa. Film stock, when you put it in the camera, it doesn't have sound on it. Sound is recorded on this little machine, the Nagra, and the sound is now on quarter inch magnetic tape stock. So now you've got the picture on film stock with no sound on it, and you've got the sound on quarter inch magnetic tape stock. When you wanna listen to them together and sort of in sync, you have to transfer the sound tape stock to sound film stock, not picture stock, 35 millimeter mag stock or magnetic stock, and sometimes it's called full coat, F-U-L-L-C-O-A-T. So wherever you're shooting, you look for a transfer facility, sound, that transfers tape stock to film stock, sound. They'll charge you four cents to eight cents a foot. If you have the equivalent of about 50,000 feet of running time, this is another two to $4,000. It's another check, another quick negotiation, two to $4,000. Next, let's get our light package. Step number 11, lights. To get our light package and our grip equipment, the easiest way to go about doing this at the cheapest deal is you're gonna look for a DP or cinematographer that made a rotten decision five years ago. A guy or gal that was a second assistant cameraman and wanted to be a big DP and realized that when he or she goes over to the light rental facilities to rent the lights, they see at the light rental facilities, they always sell their used lights in the back. So this guy or gal says, hey, I'll buy 10 lights. 
for $25 or $50 each. I'll get a couple of C-stands. I'll get some sandbags. I'll get some other cables and grip equipment. And I'll call myself a DP, Director of Photography, with lighting package. And therefore, I'll get more gigs. So when I see those little ads, I call the guy or gal up and I say, what lights do you got? Oh, I got a bunch of lights. Well, I asked you, what lights do you have? Oh, I got 15 lights. I can do this. I can do that. I can key. I can back. I can fill. That's technology on where you put certain lights. I said, what lights do you have? Will you move your lips and tell me the specific lights you have? Oh, I got a whole bunch. I said, watch my lips. Tell me the exact lights. And then I name. Do you have any Moe Richardsons? No. Do you have any Nine Lights? No. Do you have any uh, Brutes? No. Do you have any Arcs? No. And then I go, like, what the hell do you have? A battery, a flashlight, and a candle? <laughs> uh, well, what I force this person into doing is realizing to get the real gigs that he or she wants to get, they got to buy real equipment, not just this little thing. And they stumble in, this person that just wants to be a cinematographer stumbles into the equipment rental business. And they don't want to be in that business, but they walk into it. And about three years later, they got a three-ton or a five-ton truck and anywhere from $50,000 to $250,000 worth of lights, equipment, batteries, generators, filters, gels, gripping equipment in the truck. You know what? In Southern California, there are about 50 of them. Northern California, there are about 20 of them. Chicago, there's 20 to 30 of them. Seattle, there's about five or seven of them. You're going to look for, here's the key, to get your lighting and grip equipment, you're going to look for a gaffer or a grip with their own truck. Then it's your job to go with the DP, Director of Photography, and check the truck out to see that it's adequate equipment. And that's where you get it. And you'll get a deal from this person at two to $3,000 per week. So if it's three weeks, that's six to $9,000. So for six to $9,000, you have all the lights, all the grip equipment, and the truck, and two people to work on your crew. The person you rented it from is now the gaffer, might be the production designer also. And they, out of that salary, pay for their assistant, their best boy electrician. Best boy electrician, or the assistant gaffer. So that's the light and the grip. Next, and the final thing, and then we'll do a break, is number 12, get a dolly. Don't take any crap from any international filmmakers in Europe, in Germany, in Czechoslovakia, in Japan, in Mexico, in Sweden, or down in Mexico, or in Brazil, about the state of the art of American filmmaking, or Hollywood. We make such crap. We are the greatest filmmakers in the world. We are far superior to the rest of the world. There is not even a close comparison. It's like the re we're the professional National Football League, and the rest of the world is junior high. That is how different it is. Right now, you, everyone in this room and listening right now, is about 70% better than most of the French film, professional filmmakers right now. Don't take any guff from anybody. And you'll find out that, yes, we see a couple of films every year from France, a couple from England, one from Germany, maybe one from Mexico. But you know what we see? The top of their line. You don't see the other 100 or 300 films that were made there. It's amazing what it is. Why and one of the state of the arts of distance, question? Why is that? Well, there are many things in there. It's uh, one of the points that I'm getting to, they don't use technically a dolly. They don't use a dolly anywhere near that we use a dolly. They just like to do the handheld, you know, the French or tier film theory of we do the handheld, it's natural. You know what, you do a handheld camera after 12 seconds, the audience is nauseous. <laughs> nauseous, you know it. You've seen it, I'm tired of this. Okay, next, you dolly in. You don't zoom in. Zoom in just makes my head bigger on the screen. You dolly in. When you dolly in, you're bringing the audience into the screen. It now is a bi-dimensional feeling. It has so much more in production value, dollying in. So the point is you want to dolly, you want to work dolly shots if your crew knows how to work dolly shots and doesn't slow you down in your shooting schedule, which we'll get to later. So you want to rent a dolly. There are about 20 or 30 dollars you can rent. So you've got to rent a dolly that can handle the weight of a 35 millimeter camera and two people sitting on it and not jiggle. Don't do the 16 millimeter dollies or these electronic dollies. So the dollies that you can handle come from one of two companies. The two companies are Chapman Leonard, C-H-A-P-M-A-N slash Leonard, L-E-O-N-A-R-D, or Fisher. In LA and New York, they got their own facilities. Everywhere else in the world, camera rental companies rep them. So you're going to look for a dolly that you can afford that can handle the weight of a 35 millimeter camera. Here are the ones that you're going to probably get. If you get from Chapman Leonard, you'll either get the nickname a Pee Wee Dolly, 
or a hybrid dolly or a hustler dolly and then about the 10 or 15 about the 10 extra gizmos that go along with it if you get from fisher you get a fisher number nine dolly or a fisher number ten dolly and about the 10 extra gizmos that go with it but the bottom line it's a thousand dollars a week three weeks three thousand dollars guess what there it is if you hire me to do this for you i'll get it done in a day there it is your production managers right now you buy film stock you get your lab deal your camera deal your expendables your sound equipment your transfers your light grip equipment your dolly you've got two people in your crew with sound two people in your crew when you get the light grip equipment that's basically getting your little deals right now production manager production managing we're going to do a break, and when we get back, then we're going to go. The next subject is above the line, and let's get focused on what you can handle with your script. Hello, folks. So once again, before we get into the above the line and what you can handle with your script, a quick recap of what occurred so far in this tape. What we started doing is discussing the below the line details, if, as if you're going to be the production manager, line producer, and you've got to get the film stock, get the lab deal, get the camera deal, get the expendables, get the sound equipment, get the sound transfers, light grip, and the dolly. Remember, let's focus again. What we're teaching on right now and what you are is we're assuming we're a $300,000 feature film. You've got $300,000 in cash and let's make the movie. But remember, we're marking this as a million dollar budget. But if it's a million dollar budget and we really have $300,000 in cash, we can buy how many feet of film stock? We're going to shoot 35 millimeter. We're assuming we're a six to one shooting ratio. So we're going to buy about 50,000 feet of film stock. You've learned how to buy from the white market, gray market, and black market. Next, let's get our film lab and our lab deal. And we want to find out how much does it cost to get a one light or get our film developed in the can, a print, and the print being the inexpensive colored one light print. We're going to have to rent our camera package, 35 millimeter, and we're going to get probably a two-day or a three-day week rate. We're going to buy some expendables. We're going to get our sound equipment from a sound man or woman that has all their own equipment. And we're going to pay for sound transfers, which we know are four cents to eight cents a foot. Then we're going to look for our light and our grip equipment from either a gaffer or a grip that has their own truck. And we're going to rent a dolly for the shoot for probably three weeks and get our dolly. So what we've just done on this tape is explain film stock lab, camera expendable sound, sound transfers, light grip, and dolly below the line. Now let's get into above the line and our script. <laughs> 